not new to the art world and creating art. He has over 17 years of experience as a professional artist, illustrator, and designer. And his client list includes the likes of National Geographic, Discovery Channel, and Broadway, and those are just to mention a few. So I encourage everyone to check out his master profile. Also visit Greg's website, which is gregnewman.org, and you can learn a lot more about Greg. There's a lot of interesting content on there. So uh, I will quit talking now and go ahead and turn it over to you, Greg. Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, Today, I think what we're going to do is work on uh, our family Christmas card here, a goofy little sketch of uh, Santa Claus running a marathon, uh, and give a little introduction to Painter Light. Uh, it's, from what I understand, Tanya, didn't you say that's available for download tomorrow? As a trial? Yes, thank you for reminding me. We'll have a free trial download available for both Mac and PC starting tomorrow. So if you don't already have it, you can download and take it for a test run. Great, great. And I highly recommend it. It's a very capable app. Uh, you know, I used to use Sketchbook Pro for sketching, and now I'm using Painter Lite, uh, mainly because the tools are, are, are what I'm familiar with uh, from using Painter for so long. Um, a very capable app. Uh, what, what I'm going to talk about here right now is uh, this sketch in particular. Usually, I'll do a sketch and bring it into an empty canvas by placing it. Uh, I've, I've actually prepared this sketch in Painter Light, and uh, I'll just go over some of those brushes that I used for the sketch. Uh, the pencils in Painter are just fabulous. Uh, basically, use a real 2B pencil, and uh, it gives a very realistic stroke. Let me zoom in here so you can see it. Very realistic to traditional tools. So that's what I've used to create this sketch here and uh, get it prepared for painting. Um, the other way I would do it is to import using the place tool and I just grab a sketch here, and I would tell it to utilize the whole canvas, and if there's an alpha, you can retain it. And I would import that in. Notice it's on the top layer now, and uh, I can either take down the opacity and paint underneath it, or I'll duplicate this layer and put it underneath it, turning that one off, and then I can paint right on top of it. Uh, since I've already got this sketch prepared, I'm just going to delete one of these layers and just paint right here using my sketch as the reference. Um, so I, I encourage if you get the download tomorrow or if you already have Painter Light, really play with these pencils. They're a lot of fun, uh, very realistic, uh, and you'll really enjoy them. I'm going to start with some oil paints here and just start painting this, this piece. And uh, hopefully you can see what I'm doing as I work. Uh, just my brush size and my opacity for blocking. I usually set my brushes around 70% opacity and grab a nice red here. And if I'm moving too fast, let me know, Tanya. No, it, it's great. And um, I just want to remind everyone, this is the mixer palette. Isn't this the standard one that we include with Painter Light? This is actually my mixer palette, which is included. Okay. If you go in here, you can choose to restore Greg Newman's mixer palette. Skip, who I think is on this call, he uh, sure is. his mixer pad is here. Uh, so there's a, there's a bunch of preset mixer palettes you can choose from. I particularly like a little muted colors, uh, so that's what I've prepared for uh, Painter Light. Uh, give them a try. You might not like mine. You might like somebody else's. 
So what I'm doing here is using the sample color from the mixer palette, uh, grabbing some of the colors I already have. I mixed up some this morning. Uh, the reds in here I've mixed up. So I'm just going to start with the reds and start blocking in Santa's uh, costume here. And I'm using the, the thick wet oil brush. Size about 7, opacity about 69. Resaturation, for those who aren't familiar with the way Painter works, is how it's going to pick up colors as you paint and resaturate your brush. I keep that about four. Bleed, I really don't bother with. And jitter, jitter's kind of unique. It, uh, a lot of other painting apps have it. You can see it's got a, a nice grainy, graininess to it. If I turn that off, you can see the difference in the, in the brush strokes. I'm not getting that scatter, that jitter to the, to the paint as I put it down. So those are my default settings that I'll start with for blocking. I apologize if I sound a little froggy. My son has been sick this week and I hope I'm not picking up what he has. Did you get your flu shot? No, I never get flu <laughs> shots. Never. I don't trust them. I, I, I've got the mindset that uh, if you get a flu shot, you're just going to get the flu. Yeah, my doctor talked me into it. Oh, really? Yeah. I see, this, this color looks a little strange because I have an overlay over top of it. Uh, I'm just kidding. I, a, lot of, a lot of people I talk to choose to work in a lot of layers. I typically don't when I paint. I will paint right on the canvas, and if I make a mistake, I'll deal with it. I don't know why. So again, our light source is coming from the top right. I'm going to start blocking in some darker shadows. What kind of tablet are you using, Greg? Good question. Right now I am using a $46 mono price tablet. Uh -huh. it's, uh, it's not the prettiest tablet, but boy is it capable. That's all that matters. That's right. Now you were... Friendin on Twitter was doing some testing with it and uh, was very impressed with how it worked. So I got one and uh, I, I wasn't real thrilled with my Cintiq at the time because the color shift between the Cintiq and my iMac was just too great, even though I had it calibrated. Hmm. Uh, so now that I've tried this, uh, I really enjoy it. You were telling me that you're creating the Santa for your wife? <laughs> well, it's our Christmas card. Yeah. She is the runner, not me. Uh, I tend to sit on the couch a little more than she does. So, you know, just sticking with the family theme, I, I decided to do Santa running a marathon. She is, she's quite the, uh, the superstar. I'm picturing her running behind your bike now. <laughs> <laughs> and in bike, what she's referring to is what? <laughs> your Harley. <laughs> That's If anyone has any questions out there, feel free, free to um, log them in the questions panel, and we can have Greg answer them for you. Okay, I don't get too, uh, too carry, carried away with my blocking phase. I just go in here and rough in shadows and lights darks. 
and I'm not using any reference for this. I'm kind of making it up as I go along. Can you hear the scraping of my tablet? Is that what you, why you asked, Tanya? Well, I can hear it, but I was just curious because I remember you mentioning that you were not using a Wacom tablet. And um, Joe is asking, where do we find the tablet again? What's the name of that? It's monoprice.com okay. is, is the correct web address. Okay. Um, this particular one I'm using, I think, is the 10 by 6 and a quarter. Uh, it has a bunch of preset buttons at the top of it and down the left side. Uh, it's a very cheap feeling tablet, but uh, the pressure sensitivity on it is fabulous. Do you know how many levels of pressure it has? I, I do not right no. off the top of my head, no. I'll have to look at that. Yeah, uh, Ray Frendon, if you want to Google him, he did do some benchmark tests with it. Uh, and he has that kind of information on his blog. Don is wondering what paper texture you're using right now. <clears throat> I am using a French watercolor, I think. Mm, okay. Yes, French watercolor paper. And you can set those right here, and you can change them throughout your workflow. Uh, I usually start out with, uh, if I go in and create a canvas, uh, it'll, it'll ask me right here, and I'll set that at the beginning. Yeah, that's a nice little, uh, nice little grain to your, to your paint as you apply it. But I don't like, I don't like real, real rough textures. Even when I eat, that's why I don't like lima beans. <laughs> I have a friend that's crazy about textures in her food. She won't. She won't eat any condiments. I'm just gonna block in this seam coming down his pants here. And I don't get too crazy about the thickness of it because with paint, you can go right over top of it, thin it down. Now a lot of my work I get real detailed with it. This particular piece, I probably won't because he's a little more cartoony. How much time do you typically... Cartoons are a little out of my comfort zone. So, um, for a detailed sorry, piece... Yeah, for a detailed piece, what would be the average amount of time, or is that too hard of a question? No, it's not. That, that's, that's fine. Um, if it's a bust, uh, meaning head, shoulders, chest, etc., that typically takes about 10 hours. Okay. And I've been told that's fairly quick. I don't know if that's true or not. For the level of detail that you put into your paintings, I would say that's pretty typical. Is it? Mm-hmm. Okay. This, because I have the opacity set low, you can see I'm kind of building this up like watercolor. Just gently going over his pants, pulling out the colors as I work. And I'm using, on my Mac here, option key gives me my eyedropper. And I can start, once I get some colors in here, I'll just start using the eyedropper and stop going over to the palette. That was perfect timing because we had someone asking how the eyedropper works. Yeah, on the Mac it's the option key. Uh, when I had my Cintiq, I would uh, map it to one of the keys on the side of the Cintiq. But I, I'm, I'm a shortcut person, so I've always got my left hand on the keyboard and my right hand on the tablet running the, the stylus.
And you notice I'm not zooming in too close. I don't like to zoom in real close uh, when I'm working. I kind of feel like it's cheating because I came from the traditional world. Um, and I just don't. You can't do it in traditional painting unless you use a magnifying glass. Uh, so I don't. I typically don't do it when I'm painting on the computer. How did you find the transition from digital, or sorry, traditional to digital? Very difficult. And especially when I when I made the switch, Tanya, I made the switch on an Intuos four. Um, so that hand-eye disconnect was a big problem for me. And uh, what I ended up doing was uh, there's a caricature artist by the name of Paul Moyce, great guy, very talented. He teaches caricature, digital caricature classes online. And I am 100% self-taught except for the five weeks I worked with him. And I basically took his class not for the caricature aspect, but for uh, getting over that digital, traditional to digital hurdle, if that makes sense. It, it makes perfect sense. I see, you know, when someone picks up a tablet for the first time, I see them having that challenge of the disconnect. So it's a, it's a natural thing to happen when you first it really is. try it really the tablet. Is he still teaching classes? His name's Paul Moise. Paul Moise, M-O-Y-S-E, and I think it's paulmoise.com. Uh, it's very similar to the setup over at schoolism.com. Oh, okay. Um, and he gives you a weekly assignment and then gives you a, a digital a video critique. Uh, and I found that helpful. I wish I had been able to wrap my mind around caricature more. He's a fantastic caricature artist. Let me zoom out here and see how it's shaping up. One, one of the things I'll do when I'm painting, uh, maybe this will help some people out. Uh, you know the old trick of looking in a mirror or getting up and walking across the room? Um, Instead, what I'll do is either take a screenshot or uh, take a picture of it with my phone and walk away from the computer for a while and look at it on my phone real small and I'll immediately see problems with it. I know some guys that still use the mirror trick even though they're on the computer. No questions? Everybody is real quiet today. Are they shy? <laughs> they must be. Okay, I'm letting, letting the sketch overlay this as I work, and it's starting to get in my way a little bit. I'll continue to block this in, and then... Uh, jump over and start blocking it some of the uh, other spots of Sienna, such as his scarf. I think we're going to go some shades of green on this. I encourage you, if, if you download the trial or you buy Painter Lite or, or even Painter Pro, go through and just play with the brushes, find out what is comfortable to you, what you're, uh, what you're used to in your, in your workflow. Um, as a traditional artist, I use watercolors and gouache, but in Painter, I find myself using acrylic and oil. So really, just play with the brushes and find out which ones suit your, your needs, your style, etc.
Did it take you a while to discover the brushes that you liked, or was it a fairly quick process? It was fairly quick. You know, I, I knew how I wanted my paint to flow. Um, so I just went in and, and you know, sketched. Wasn't too concerned about getting detailed or, you know, working out a masterpiece. Just went in and sketched and found the brushes that I liked that worked for, for what I wanted to, uh, to, to get across in the painting. mix up some colors here so you can see how mixing works. I want to get a darker darker green for the stripes. So I'm going to grab that green I'm working on and I'm going to mix up uh, these are dark blues here. It's probably hard for you to see it on the monitor. I rarely ever use black in my paintings. So you can just mix right here on the mixer palette. You grab your eyedropper and select it. And uh, that becomes the color you're working with. I know that you do all kinds of work. You do portraits and bikes. We have Adam is asking, are bike paintings your favorite? He thinks that they're amazing, your work. Oh, thank you, Adam. Uh, no, bikes are not my main thing. I think. Uh, portraits and oddly enough I don't have a whole lot on my site wildlife I, I grew up idolizing Guy Koliak if I'm pronouncing his name properly and Robert Bateman who are uh, sort of the superstars in the, in the uh, wildlife world but portraits uh, I just love capturing people's personality so portraits are what I really do the most the, the paintings um, I, uh, of the motorcycles, I just last last year I did a set. Uh, <clears throat> there's actually a couple of them. The others are not on the site yet. Uh, I did a 1905. Uh, I did the 47. Those were an experimentation with one of the dealerships here in the Charlotte area, and we're still trying to figure out how we're going to work together on that. So that's where that piece came from. And you also do commissions, don't you? I do. <laughs> I do. When I have time, I'll take on commissions. Always have. I started doing commissions when I was 15 years old. I may have to contract you to do a commission, a painting for my father. Oh, I'd love to. And your father <laughs> rides, too. So. <laughs> yes, he sure does. He and I have a little bit in common there. Okay, as you can see, I mean, it's not a masterpiece by far, uh, but we're blocking in the colors and sand is starting to take shape. And that's what, that's what the blocking phase is all about. You know, don't get crazy. Just get in there and get your colors set. They don't even have to be correct. Uh, just get them in there, and you'll start to see your piece take shape and you can make corrections along the way. A lot of times I'll paint and I won't even use the correct colors. If you look real closely at some of the portrait work I do, uh, it's not true skin tone color, but when a piece comes together, it certainly does look like it. So you never use it the eraser? Never. The only time I ever use the eraser, Tanya, is if I'm in the sketch phase, and even then, uh, that's only to really correct a major mistake that's getting in my way. Mm -hmm. I never use the, the eraser. I know that Jeremy Sutton works that way also. He doesn't believe in erasing. <laughs> no. Uh, they're happy mistakes, right? Okay. Let's switch brushes here a minute. 
Let's grab an acrylic. Grab the wet acrylic, take my size down, and my opacity a little bit. And you can see the difference here. Uh, can start getting in here and getting a little bit more detail on my blocking if I wanted to. I just want to carve in some of these lights and darks. Well, I'm just noticing a question from Helen here, and she's asking, what is the difference between Painter Light and Painter 12? And while you're painting, um, I, I can point out that if you want to see in a chart format what that looks like, Helen, we have a matrix that's right on the Painter Light website that will show you Painter Light compared with Painter 12. But one of the main differences is customization. So if you wanted to customize brushes or paper textures or things like that, that capability is available in Painter 12. And Greg, right. I, don't, I don't know if there's anything else that you would like to add. Um, there are a lot more brushes in Painter 12. Uh, I guess is, is Corel yeah. calling that the Pro version now? Yeah, it's it, technically it's the pro version, and um, that's definitely true. We, we tried to take the best sampling of Painter 12 brushes so that you could get a flavor for from each category of media. You'd have some brushes to start with in Painter Light, um, but yeah, it's definitely scaled back compared to the 700 something brushes in Pro. You can definitely customize the brushes better in, in Painter Pro. Uh, that being said, there's nothing wrong with the brushes in Painter Light, and it's a great way. Now, if you don't want to uh, jump straight into Pro, is there any kind of an upgrade policy with Light to, to uh, yes. Pro Tanya? Yes, we, we do have an upgrade path, um, and that all that information is available right on the website too. So if you were looking to you know start slow, get started in light, you could definitely upgrade to Pro at a later point in time. Yeah, try it out, and uh, you know if you if you decide you want to get some of the uh, customizing capabilities, then you can jump up to the Pro and take a look at that. Now, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit here and downsize my brush because we've got some stripes on his gloves that I want to work on. Get those blocked in. Purposely not using hotkeys for resizing so people can see how I'm doing the brushes. How I'm working the settings on the brushes. Bob is asking, and I know you touched on this briefly, but if you can add textures to your layers like you do in Photoshop. You can. You're probably asking the wrong person on that. Okay, I can I can give a little suggestion on that. Outside of switching between the paper textures from the effects menu, there's also something called apply surface texture, and that will let you select from any of the 10 paper textures that are included and you could apply them to a layer. So that's another way to add a little texture or when you're all done with the painting, if you want to exhibit that texture, you could apply it to the entire canvas. That's good to know. I apologize, my dog is snoring. Your dog is snoring? <laughs> yeah. I work out of my home in Chicago, just like you're in <laughs> working out of your home there. Yeah. Yeah, I have my home studio. I locked up my dogs before. Uh, you know, it's Christmas time, and one of ours is a German Shepherd, and 
for some reason, she likes uh, or thinks that she would like to taste the UPS map. Oh, that's a since common problem. <laughs> yeah, since he's always coming down the street, she knows the sound of his truck. <laughs> I don't think our listeners would appreciate that too much. <laughs> Probably not. Everybody is so quiet today. Unfortunately for this call, I mean, you, you all aren't going to be able to see the crazy shoes I'm going to put on Santa. If, if any of you are runners, then you've probably seen what these runners wear on their feet. And they are crazy shoes. <laughs> are you going to do some fluorescent shoes or something like that? I am. I'll do you are. Yellow, red, and purple, and completely clashed with his outfit. But Santa's a male, so he's not too into uh, to matching. <laughs> now, when you have this all done, are you going to post it somewhere for us? I will. It okay. will be up on the site, and uh, and I'll give you a copy of it too, Tanya, if you want to add it to because I think Oh, great. Going up on YouTube? Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, I will give you a copy of it. It will be done this week because we've got to get our Christmas cards out in the mail. Is there a proper time to do that? You know, half the time I end up doing Happy New Year cards because I'm running late. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say, okay, this I'm a little bit of a procrastinator sometimes, so my wife already sent the important ones out, and those people will just get two cards this year. Because <laughs> she, I guess she didn't think I was going to get this done. Oh. Didn't she know that you were starting it in the webinar? Or did you decide this last minute? No, I, I've been working on this sketch, actually, yeah. the idea since Thanksgiving. And I think that's what worried her. Well, you've been working on it for a couple of weeks, off and on. Is it going to really be ready? Oh, but you're busy. You have other things to do, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. All right, let's lock in some skin tones. I wish I could create something like this for my cards. The best I can do is take a picture, put it in there. Oh, there's nothing wrong with that. Although, all of these brushes, I don't know if you've seen Karen Boniker is doing her 25 brushes of Christmas. Now with those, I could you know, probably... I haven't, I, I've seen you post a couple links to it, and I've bookmarked some of them, but I have not been over to see what she's up to yet. Yeah, she makes it very easy to create beautiful seasonal paintings. So I, I should try that out. Mm -hmm. I think when this is done, it will be more detailed in a cartoon, but not as detailed as my typical work. I'll just have some fun with it and see where it goes. Still no questions? Somebody must have a question for us. Let me just, I'm scanning through, sometimes I miss some of them. There was a question, but I think you already covered it between the tablet and drawing on the screen like you do with the Cintiq. Uh, yeah, the Cintiq's great for that. Um, once you get the hang of the tablet, though, it's really not a big deal. Um, it, it just takes some practice, and you've got to be patient with it, because it's not going to happen overnight, that's for sure. Now, do you always create your paintings? Do you set the canvas size up at the size that you're going to print, or do you size up no. after the fact? I do not. That's a good question. I'll set an imaginary size. Uh, 
and by the time I'm done, I'll probably crop it a couple of times, maybe resize it. Resolution-wise, I usually start around 150 pixels. Um, and I love this about Painter, um, because I can go in here and upsize. When I get to the detailing stages, after I've done all my blocking and I'm starting to detail, I'll do this. I'll upsize the resolution to 600. And notice there's no loss. How cool is that? Yeah, I hear that all the time. That's one of the huge benefits for our artists, that you can upsize like that. Yeah, I've never, never seen that happen before. And you know, I spent six years in the trade show industry uh, doing 20-foot photo murals. And we always wished we had that capability. Let's just interpolate that thing so it fits 20 feet by 20 feet. Well, we couldn't do it. If we would have had that tool back then. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, no, I do not work at the final final size or resolution. I just kind of see where the painting goes. Unless a client tells me, well, we got to have this fit within uh, 11 by 14. Then, yeah, I know I've got to set my canvas up for that. Mm -hmm. Now, are there any brushes that, from Painter 12 that you miss, that you have to go back to Painter 12 for, that you don't have in light? Or are you able to get away? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, and that's just out of habit. I've got some that Don Siegmuller gave me that I use pretty religiously. And they work really well for hair. Um, so yes, I, I miss those out of Painter Light. As far as the standard brushes, no, there's really nothing nothing that I, I really miss out of it, no. I think we've gone over the time, Tanya, but I, I'm fine with that. <laughs> well, it's entirely up to you. I don't want to keep you. Um, I'm sure everyone's interested. I'm just going through all the questions here to make sure we didn't miss anything. People are admiring your work, saying it's brilliant. Thank you. Let's see, I'm going to go in here and just touch on the blenders a minute. Um, there's some great blenders. When, when I work traditionally, I, I usually keep a stump in my hand at all times. If you know what that is, it's just the rolled paper. Great for blending graphite or, or charcoal. Oh, okay. Some of these blenders in here are a lot of fun to work with. Just go in and smooth out your blocking a little bit, see where you are. So right now I'm using the grainy water blender. And I think, uh, I think I originally found that one from Skip Allen, one of his webinars. Skip gives a lot of good pointers. And for those of you that may not have checked it out, he, he actually created a whole Getting Started series for Painter Light, and that's up on our YouTube channel, along I with... That. That. Yeah, he did, along with the video that you created that we've got up there. So there's a lot of references and learning materials for light if you just check out the YouTube channel. I'm hoping to build more as we go along. So. Yeah, I will be doing some more uh, tutorials on Painter and Painter Light as well. I think we have a good start on the blocking here, I think. Uh, you'll notice that Painter has a shelf here uh, for your most recent brushes. Right now I'm on the grainy 
water blender, I can easily switch back to other brushes that I've used recently right here instead of going up through the, uh, the, the drop-down palette. And there you'll see I'm picking up the colors right around it to blend a little bit without using the grainy water blender. Adam is wondering if you sign each of your images or is there, do you have a little template you kind of, or a graphic that you place? I do both. I usually sign it real small somewhere and then I'll use a uh, digital signature right over top of it. If it gets printed and sent out to anybody though, I always hand sign them. Hmm. You know, with all the theft on the internet these days, it can never be too safe. Yeah. That's true. It's amazing how people take artists' work and post it up to their website and think that that's okay. Yeah, it really is. Are you hearing the dog? UPS just pulled up. <laughs> Very faintly. Yeah, I will uh, definitely be posting this when it's finished here this week at some point. And just to remind everyone, because I'm getting some questions, if this is being recorded, we're definitely recording it. And I'll check out and see if it needs any edits, and then I'll post it up to youtube.com forward slash painter tutorials. That's our YouTube channel. And it'll be under the Master Your Art Technique playlist. So we're actually moving. Um, we started our new year, technically, for Corral um, as of December. And this year, I'm planning to hold two painter webinars per month. So they'll be on the, fir or the second and fourth Tuesday of the month. That's the plan. They may shift here or there, but... Um, yeah, I just thought it'd be a good idea to bring you more painter masters and more information, and we're just going to shorten them to 30 minutes. Neat. Hopefully I can get on some other ones with you. Sure. Yeah, I think I told you I decided to shorten them because we found that the people viewing the content, that you guys only view about 12 minutes of our one-hour sessions when you go to watch them again. So that was interesting. and. I'll try to do my best to edit out some of the little gem snippets from the webinars, too. Well, I think I'll stop the painting right there. And uh, what I'll do is I'll continue on using uh, ScreenFlow and just record myself as I finish this thing up. Terrific. We'd love to see you complete it. It looks wonderful.